Welcome back to another Teacher Profile. Right now we're here with Jan Valine, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Sacramento County Office of Education. Uh, congratulations, first of all, on being named Teacher of the Year. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it and very honored to be here. Well, tell me, tell me about where you teach and, and the students that you teach. Explain that for everybody. Um, I teach um, through the county office in a juvenile court school program. Uh, we have grades 7 through 12. Once in a while, they'll sneak in a sixth grader, but usually they're 12 years old. Uh, we have, at our particular site, Bowling, we have two classrooms, and we try to make them age appropriate. So I typically take the seventh through ninth grade, and the other classroom runs a little bit of the older students. Uh, like I say, it's self-contained, so there's, uh, I teach multi-subjects with a lot of different types of interventions, uh, life skill counseling group comes in. We have all sorts of community groups that'll come in and uh, do various things with them. Uh, we have uh, mental health, at our facility, we, I have probation officers all around me to ensure that things are going well and to be there as a support. And, um, but it's a typical self-contained classroom and the kids are there for a variety of reasons. It could be because of their um, expulsion from their district school, it could be truancy, it could be that their probation officer feels they weren't making very good progress at the other school, so they'll pull them in to give them time to kind of work out some issues, maybe to get some intervention from counseling or through um, maybe some gang awareness and some you know, personal development, then they come with us. What are some of the, the special challenges that you face in the classroom with these students? Probably some of the challenges is poor self-concept, uh, impulse control because a lot of times it's kind of like the young child who immediately wants something. It doesn't matter what else is going on. It their needs to be their needs have to be taken care of right away. And sometimes we just have to train them. You know what's more appropriate? How else could we do that? So I might have to model appropriate responses and award those who really make the progress to do that. Um, I mentioned self-esteem. You know my kids come from such a diverse background. Um, there could be drug problems with them or with their families. Their parents could be in and out of jail or prison. They could come from the areas of town where there's, it's very chaotic, a high crime area. Um, or maybe, you know, learning disabilities, um, poor social interaction. It, there's such a multitude of things um, that bring them there and we try to work and address each student separately. What are some of the rewards you get out of teaching these students? Sometimes it may not be as big as some people think. I tend to go for the little things. Um, like yesterday, I have a student who's leaving in two weeks to go back to his district, and he asked me, he just, he graduated with me from eighth grade, and he's doing ninth grade as this, this summer. He said, Ms. Bling, can you come, I'm gonna go to Burbank, can you come teach my senior year so you could be my teacher when I graduate? That will last me probably a year, and maybe um, when I have to keep somebody out after school in detention, but they leave smiling, that will last. I know that will carry me through the next day. Um, it might be a parent saying something, and I do get to interact with parents where a lot of my colleagues may not. They just meet with their probation officers. So I think that what keeps me going, and the feedback I get from um, my peers help. I think when I try to do something new, and if it doesn't work, and I try to work it out and try something else, those things um, are what I use to keep me in there. And what made you decide to to teach um, this in this type of education system? Um, partly because I think I'm from a very large family, and there's a, so there's a lot of chaoticness. Even though you know it's a typical, somewhat middle class family, um, we always played school. And I was always the teacher, though. And it probably didn't last long, five, 10 minutes. But I think what happened to me was when I came out, I thought I wanted to be your typical elementary school teacher. And I started subbing. And I thought, well, you know, I kind of like the different populations. I'm going to try special ed. So I started doing that with the county and some other school districts. All of a sudden, they said, well, we need subs over in our alternative programs like juvenile hall. And, and I thought, well, I don't know. I'm awful young. I don't think. Well, they said, no, no, you'll be fine. So I started doing that and saw all the different things that people did. I thought, 
well, this is like elementary teaching at its finest, and it's for the neediest. And I had done student teaching in some of the areas like West Sacramento, um, subbed in a lot of the harder districts, and I had a pretty good understanding of the population. I, and I just think because of my demeanor, I think I get along well. I have a very subtle sense of humor, and um, I think that's, that's what drew me to it because I was received well by kids and teachers. Now, is there anything special you do with your students to try to inspire them or encourage them? Uh, you, you, do, do, you do teach a different population, so is there a different approach that you have to take? Um, I have to be willing to change gears in midstream. So um, if we're talking about science, but it takes us somewhere else and the kids are engaged, I might change the focus. I, mean, my, I might have to develop a new project. Um, I think some of the things I do are pretty creative. Like I may not give your typical test because my kids come and go. They may be called out for a couple hours in the week, so they may not have gotten everything. I could send something home, but I may never see it again. So I might do testing. I might play Jeopardy. I did that a lot with history where kids didn't really like it, so they, didn't, they would make their own cards up. I would put things that would be on a gen, the regular test, and it'd be game format. Um, I might, like in math, I have a lot of students right now that are working well below levels in math, so they don't have their basic adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So I do bingo. And, and they start memorizing, even though they know they can cheat on the chart. Um, if I move faster, then the, they, they do try to remember. So I think it's sometimes it's having fun, and they think they're just playing a game, but they're uh -huh. actually doing something in the process that will move them forward. Do you find sometimes that your students inspire you? Oh, yes. When I look at the disposition of some kids come in with a smile, they're joking around. They might be teasing a little bit too much, but when I know about what's going on in their homes and they still come every day on time, they try to hang in there, I think, wow, they have so many challenges. And then when they tell me their stories, uh, you know, well, I don't know who my dad is, or um, my mom has to work all the time. You know, they're, uh, er, we live in a very crowded house. We, everybody lives with us. I don't even have my own room. I think, well, I'm so blessed because I really understand being when you live with a lot of family, but I was taken care of, and a lot of times our kids aren't taken care of, and I just, I just feel like, wow, if they can do it, I should be able to get through my own little trials and tribulations a lot easier because I have a lot more resources than them. So you, you get back as much as you give? I, I think so. Even on my bad days <laughs> or with them, if they're having a bad day, I learn something. I learn something about myself that maybe there's a different approach I can do. Or they teach me, you know, that's not going to work. They'll just tell me, that's not going to work. I go, well, why or how? So they have to teach me. So what would you say to uh, all those people out there who are considering teaching as a profession, um, whether it's in special education or, or not, what would you say to them to kind of convince them to really seriously consider being a teacher? I think in all our lives we want to um, give something to somebody, we want to give a special gift, we want to be special in our own way, and I think teachers do that. They touch people in their own unique ways through their own personal passions through their own social interactions. And it, I think people just by sharing. I think if you're that kind of person, especially if you're strong in some of the areas that most teachers sometimes you know, steer clear for, like math, you can bring so much into those subjects that it may, the pay may, may not be good to start, but the rewards are so much there because it's a lifestyle. It's not just a job, it's a lifestyle because you can work anywhere, but I don't, I think if you have the passion to help people and give something to somebody, teaching is where it's at. Okay, well thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you. We've been talking with Jan Valine, who is the Teacher of the Year for 2008 for the Sacramento County Office of Education. Thank you, Thank Jan. you.